so guys hope you're test week so far it's again if you guys want warhammer video be looking at uh what was what if the emperor was resurrected i kind of always thought this in the back of my head i never watched any video when they talked about the emperor at all or even just the imperium itself like what would the emperor actually do if he came back alive and uh hopefully this kind of answers my question a little bit uh it's not a super in-depth video but i think it's going to cover at least some some uh general basis on it so uh I'm, I'm too excited for it because i know if he came back it'd be stupidly op and just be like an absolute menace uh but yeah but like always please check the original video in the description so it'll be uh clear some love if you guys enjoy my content if you guys enjoy reactions please don't forget to like and subscribe let's get to it the Emperor is truly the Warhammer 40,000, but with him acting as the galaxy's most powerful vegetabilized lithium battery, he's not exactly in a chatty mood. Contrast okay. this with the Whoa, Emperor that? that was around for the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy, and it is a bit sad seeing what we have lost. But what if the Emperor was resurrected and returned to his flesh and blood form? How would that impact this? Chaos would be absolutely shitted on. Uh, Tyranids would just be basically a, a minor threat. Orcs would be a literal no threat. Uh, for pretty much all the problems the Imperium has now are almost be eliminated for the most part because the Emperor would be present. I mean, all the Space Marine Legions, uh, just everything would just be better. Everything would just be better. Setting, and would it actually even be a good thing Primarchs, for the Imperium? Before we get started, the annoying thing about getting or keeping healthy is that everybody is different. What works for some people won't work for Get your ass on track and live a better, healthier life or to life. After stating what we know would happen, we can then theorycraft a bit about what course of action the Emperor could take. Also, quick shout out to Alex Christie for the amazing thumbnail art for this video. High res version of this is available to download for free on my Patreon. Oh, let's get into it. There are a number of potentially viable ways to bring the Emperor back to life, whether it be through technology, sorcery, or random convenient plot devices. You could also just unhook the Golden Throne and pray that you didn't just doom the galaxy. I'll probably make another video regarding the different it's potential methods of his resurrection, <laughs> but it's important to note that the Emperor currently does not want to be returned to true life. Attempts have been made with the Emperor himself often thwarting them. The leading theories behind why he doesn't want anyone to bring him back is A, they would probably butcher it and, and cause a lot of issues, or B, the Emperor that is on the throne in this undying state is more powerful than the Emperor ever was as flesh and blood, so a resurrection would actually reduce his power. As an example of this, during the heresy, the living Emperor was able to project himself to Vulcan in order to encourage and give his son strength to survive Conrad and escape from him. That in itself is impressive, but in the current setting, Scaly Emperor was able to cure Gilliman of a Primarch killing disease from across the galaxy, then set fire to Nurgle's garden, which is fucking crazy. Gilliman remarked that talking to his father now was like talking to a star or cosmic entity, as a opposed to the very impressive but still human emperor who we knew 10,000 years prior. So that's a bit of context about why there doesn't seem to have been a genuine attempt at his resurrection yet. But let's say for a second that the emperor decided that it was time to re-enter the fray or maybe Call was so intense with his resurrection attempt that the emperor couldn't stop him. And then the emperor was perfectly restored to his pre-death state, just before he went to go confront Horus and the vengeful spirit. Now a lot of you probably think that he would get up, oil up his glorious abs, set his flaming sword alight and then ram it down Abaddon's dick hole and then proceed to solo clap the galaxy's cheeks, but that would not that. be the case at all. The first issue is that the Golden Throne still needs to be sat upon and powered, with the Astronomicon still needing it to exist and the Webway Gate needing to remain sealed. So the Emperor would still be very much stuck on the Golden Throne. Sure, he could now issue more direct orders and speak more freely, but his overall power would be diminished. No more cheesy Gilliman saves or setting fire to Nurgle. There is the potential for all the worship he was now receiving to greatly empower him, but I doubt it would bring him to the same level as purely Throne Emperor. So the first order I mean, a lot of the psychers that are sacrificed every day would be, uh, you know, saved. So that's, so that's kind of a positive. <laughs> order of business would be to get his ass off the throne. The setting of 40k is a lot more chaotic and less structured than 30k, which is something the Emperor can use to his advantage. What I mean by that is in 30k, everyone was taken by surprise by chaos. Fate seemed really set in stone, and if something shit was happening, you just kind of had to cop it. The Thousand Sons were falling to the flesh change. Sanguinius was fated to die at the hands of Horus. The Elder were absolutely useless. These things were set in stone in 30k, whereas in 40k, destiny and fate are broken all the time. Gilliman was never supposed to to come back to life, but he did. Likewise, no one foresaw the lion's return. Yvrain was able to undo the Rubik of Ahriman and return a few of the Thousand Sons to life, something that should have been impossible. Basically, the point is that there would be some kind of plot device that could get the Emperor off the throne, most likely a combination of the Emperor guiding Call with instructions, whilst also getting the help from the Elder. 
To be honest, getting Trezin to lend a hand as well wouldn't go astray. The Elder could help with permanently sealing the webway, Trezin could help with fixing the Golden Throne, and Kaul would tie it all together with human science, and maybe, just maybe, the Emperor would be free to leave the throne and power it like he did before he attempted the webway project, just with cool. his mind from afar. While they were undertaking this task, which would take a while, news of the Emperor's resurrection would spread like wildfire. Massive pilgrimages would be undertaken. The Emperor would send out his custodians on various different special missions, including finding and bringing the Lion and Gilead and back to Terra to speak with. Now a point that some people make is that the Emperor's return could cause an Imperial Civil War. Kind of like the idea of Ooh. what would happen to our own- Ooh. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. Interesting. Earth, if Jesus came back to life, you'd have yeah. the people whose position of power felt threatened, so would denounce Jesus or the Emperor as a pretender, but then you would have the believers who would kill for their return Messiah. However, this civil war would not actually happen. Firstly, because Gilliman already did a purge of the Imperium's upper echelons when he took command, so the Emperor's return would be pretty smooth, and secondly, the Emperor is powerful as hell and would have his custodies. Any oh, dissidents yeah. could be wiped out by custodian kill team. Isn't the custodians are like a thousand space marines per custodian, basically? Or am I like lowballing them too much? Like I know they're stupidly OP. Like they're 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 stupid, stupid OP. Or simply mind nuked by the Emperor. It just really wouldn't be a thing. Once off the throne, the Emperor would be dismayed, seeing his empire as this rotted, corrupted, fanatical thing, the opposite of what he was trying to build. This would really be shattering. What would even be worse is that he would come to the same realization as Gilliman did. At this point, the Imperium's faith in the Emperor as a god was actually helping out a lot. Not just because it was empowering the Emperor, but also because it massively boosted morale and safeguarded the Imperium from corruption. If he tried to start once again insisting that corrupt, gods weren't real and everyone I had guess. to be an atheist, then Chaos would have a field day and could do Horus Heresy 2, Electric Boogaloo. Like imagine if your golden god emperor was just like, gods aren't real, but then you got attacked by demons and shit, you'd just cry and die. But if you thought gods were real and as such, so were demons, you'd face down the hordes of hell like a true believer. I believe the emperor would have two main objectives upon exiting the golden throne. The first would be to reduce or even remove the great rift from the setting, allowing the Imperium to be made whole again. And secondly, he would be searching for the lost loyalist Primarchs and potentially even attempting to confront the traitor ones. He wouldn't be surprised at the presence of the Necron since he's literally punched them with the Void Dragon before and would even see them as an opportunity to help deal with the Rift. I imagine the Silent King would be eager to talk with the Emperor, as the Biggie would represent a great chance to defeat the Tyranids, alongside the Silent King being an honourable and pragmatic leader. The Tyranids would be a big spanner in the works for the Emperor, something he did not foresee whilst the Hive Mind would designate him as the ultimate prey, the number one target in the galaxy, oh, yeah, not just because yeah. of his threat level, but to consume the DNA of the Emperor would likely allow some sort of obscenely fucked up Tyranid evolution that would most likely win them the setting. Chaos would be massively concerned by the Emperor and would be preparing multiple contingencies and greater demons to try slay him, or at least slow him. Abaddon would not be stoked about this, but his sword, Drachnion, would hunger to taste the Emperor's blood once again. Perhaps it would even try and influence or even possess Abaddon, setting up an epic Emperor vs Drachnion rematch. There's a good chance that with the Emperor return to the forefront, any still surviving living loyalist Primarchs would also return to the setting, as the Big E coming back would kick off the Warhammer 40k end game. Corvus, Vulcan, Lehman, and Jagado could all return, with Rogel being a maybe and Sanguinius and Ferris being a hard no. In return, Lorga, Fulgrim, Perturabo, and even Amigon would also return to the setting in force. Perhaps an Emperor and Magnus meeting could give the big red boy the redemption arc we've all been craving for him, the Emperor drawing out Zinch's corruption and even returning Magnus's noble shard to him. There is also the fact that it was stated that given enough time, the Emperor and Malkador could bring back dead Primarchs, so maybe the Big E oh. works to return Ferris or even Sanguinius before he goes out to smack down with the entire galaxy. It's hard to say exactly what would happen as there are so Why many issues that need sorting, but I genuinely don't think it would just be a stomp. The Emperor took a couple yeah. centuries to conquer the galaxy during the Great Crusade, and that was a galaxy that was ripe to be conquered, with very few significant hostile empires to deal with, and the Emperor having all the Primarchs and Legions intact. Now he only has two Primarchs with scattered forces, facing up against a mighty Orc Empire, the Tyranid Onslaught, a supercharged Chaos, an Awoken Necron Empire, and we can't forget the mightiest foe of them all, the Tau. The Emperor was powerful, but I think a lot of people don't realize that he isn't all powerful or an insta win. He couldn't just snap his fingers and infinity stone everyone's tits off. The dude got his hands dirty in the Great Crusade, charging in with claw, bolter, and blade. There were times where he was genuinely in a pickle and he needed a hand. One thing that is important to mention is the Emperor's attitude 
continued upon being revived. During the Great Crusade, he was full of hope for humanity. He was almost like holding himself back in a way as he genuinely saw a path to a true golden age of peace. In this new grimdark setting, where there is only war, he would embrace that. He would see this Imperium as a thing that needed to be destroyed and rebuilt, but also as a useful tool. His rage and vengeance would be an unholy thing to witness. There would be no more mercy or compassion. He would seek to burn out the enemy with pure ruthless violence, likely burning the Imperium in the process, and from the ashes, he would rebuild mankind anew, free of dogma and superstition. Or perhaps he would embrace the Dark King and come to the realization so that as long as life persisted, so would evil, thus all life must be ended. It could really go a number of ways, but the odds of the Emperor being revived in the next 20 years are just about as high as me having a threesome with Anna Diarmas and Margot Robbie. It's not zero, but it may as well be. That was good, man. I mean, I wish it was like a longer video, but at the same time, it's like I do enjoy these kinds of videos because it gets straight to the point, just says A, B, and C, which is what I enjoy because then, you know, we can go find our video off of this one to get more of a, a, a detailed look at it. But uh, it was a great video. Uh, I did like how he kind of said like the Emperor would just come in and snap his fingers. And I think that's like, I was thinking that he can come back and almost in a way do that, not like literally, but like, you know, to a point. Uh, but thinking about how chaotic you know, the last 10,000 years have been in the uh, warmer universe, it's it's safe to say that it would not be an easy going for the Emperor, especially if you can't get off the going throne like like that. I could see causing some kind of problems for the Imperium, and especially the Emperor wanting to kind of reverse all the uh, toxic, terrible things that have happened in, in the 10,000 years. So, uh, but great video though, from Major Khalid, that he, he always nails out of the park, he does a phenomenal job. So, show him some love. Uh, the original video of the inscription. If you guys are my content, if you guys are my reactions, please don't forget to like, subscribe. See you guys next one. Take it easy.